Hello and welcome to video number 11 for AQA Psychology AS Level and A Level Syllabus 7181 and 7182. And this video is about the fight or flight response including the role of adrenaline. So what is the fight or flight response? Well, you're at the bus stop and you go for your mobile phone in your pocket and it's not there. And all of a sudden you have this awful kind of um, collapsing feeling inside your chest as a load of adrenaline is released into your bloodstream. Well, that's the fight or flight response. The fight or flight response is an evolved response to a threat that prepares our body for physical activity. And it comes from the Stone Age, and the kind of threats that we would experience in the Stone Age, it would be quite appropriate to meet those threats with physical activity. For example, um, if you're being chased by a, a carnivorous wild animal in the Stone Age, or you're confronted with um, uh, someone from the neighbouring village with a spear, then probably the best thing to do is either to fight or to run away. Fight or flight. Unfortunately for us, the kind of threats that we experience in the 21st century are not very well met with um, a physical uh, response. And that causes us a lot of troubles. But it just goes to illustrate the fact that really we are still Stone Age people. We are virtually unchanged in the evolutionary terms um, from the time when our ancestors were walking around um, on the African savannah. So the body's fight or flight response begins in the amygdala, which is a part of the brain right in the middle. It's a part of the limbic system which controls our emotional responses and the amygdala could be regarded as the alarm centre of the brain. Um, and if you do the aggression module um, in the second year of the A-level, uh, then you'll learn a lot more about that. The amygdala sends an alarm signal to the hypothalamus and then the hypothalamus activates two separate response systems in response uh, to the alarm. And both of those end up with the adrenal gland but in different parts of the adrenal gland. The first one is SAM or the sympathoadrenal medullary system. And SAM, or S-A-M, is the body's response to a sudden or an acute stressor. HPA, the other one, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, is the body's response to a long-term or a chronic stressor. And the two systems work together um, to give us the fight or flight response. Okay, so first we'll look at SAM, the sympathetic adrenal medullary system. Sympathetic refers to the sympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system. And for more detail on that, look back at video number seven, which is about the divisions of the nervous system. <coughs> the sympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system directly stimulates the adrenal medulla, the medulla of the adrenal gland. Now, medulla simply means the inside of any organ in the body. So the adrenal medulla is the inside of the adrenal gland. And when it's stimulated by the sympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system, the adrenal medulla releases two hormones, adrenaline and noradrenaline. And these two hormones have the effect of increasing our heart rate, um, increasing our blood pressure, uh, increasing our breathing and respiration, and releasing uh, glucose into the bloodstream. In other words, uh, preparing our body for physical activity and physical exertion. Um, also, our digestion is reduced by these two hormones. When the threat has passed, when the stressor has passed, 
then the parasympathetic nervous system reverses all of these changes, reduces our heart rate, reduces our blood pressure, reduces our breathing, and enhances our digestion. And that's why the parasympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system is sometimes called the rest and digest system. So the sympathetic adrenal medullary pathway is the body's response to an acute or sudden stressor and it's what is commonly known as the fight or flight response, the release of adrenaline and noradrenaline into our bloodstream. Okay, well in a minute we're going to be looking at the HPA axis, but first it's time for this week's random psychology fact. Hi, this week's random psychology fact is the only innate emotions are joy, acceptance, fear and surprise. Sadness, guilt, anticipation and anger. Other more complicated emotions like love and guilt are believed to be a combination of these. This is from Polchik study in 1980. Well, that was this week's random psychology fact. OK, the HPA axis is the body's response to chronic stress or to long term stress. It's called HPA because it's the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. And so it also ends up in the adrenal gland, but just a different part of the adrenal gland. What happens is the amygdala stimulates the hypothalamus and the hypothalamus releases corticotrophic releasing hormone and the corticotrophic releasing hormone stimulates the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland to release adrenocorticotrophic hormone into the bloodstream and the adrenocorticotrophic hormone travels through the bloodstream to the adrenal cortex. Now cortex is just the name for the surface of, of, of any organ in the body. So uh, the adrenal cortex is just the surface of the adrenal gland. And when the adrenal cortex is stimulated by adrenocorticotrophic hormone, then it releases another hormone into the bloodstream called cortisol. Cortisol, so named because it comes from the adrenal cortex. And cortisol does a number of things. First of all, it reduces our sensitivity to pain. On the negative side, it also can reduce our cognitive function. It can make us think less clearly and it can also, in the long term, uh, reduce uh, the function of our immune system and make us more susceptible to disease and infection. So HPA axis, if it's stimulated in the long term, can although it helps us uh, in our fight or flight by reducing our sensitivity to pain, it can also cause illness in the long term. OK, so in this video, we have looked at the fight or flight response, which is an evolved Stone Age response to stressors. And it's a response which gets our body ready for physical activity. And we've looked at SAM, the sympathoadrenal medullary axis, and HPA, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis.